Okay, so today we're going to look at the cross pin diff, which is ideal for road car, competition car, where you don't want to go to a full limited slip differential. So Steve's got one just here. Okay, here we go. We'll take a box unit out. This one has already been unpacked, but here we have the diff unit itself. As you can see, it's got the cross pins fitted as a standard. Internally in the box, you will find four planet gears, like so. And that's as opposed to two on the standard. As opposed diff. to two, you just have one pin. Four thrust washers to go with the planet gears, and two thrust washers to go on the output shafts. Now, the output shafts don't come with the differential. You use the original ones out of your existing differential. Okay. So you can either have pot joints, hardy spices, or the old spider coupling type. Got it. Three different types. But you're going to have those if you rebuild now. You will do. Okay, we'll quickly run through how to dismantle this because this it's quite tricky if you haven't done one before. Well, I've got a bit of cardboard here. Just pop that around there just to stop any damage. And we'll just show this as if you're doing it at home. So we're not okay. using any fancy tools here. No fancy tools, no. This is the easiest way to do it. Okay. The Allen key comes with it, so first job is put the Allen screw on the left hand side of the diff, take the screw out, we'll pop the screw there just for ease. Now because you're not going to have long series punches and everything at home, we're just going to show you an easy way to do this. An old drill bit, okay. the right size to fit into the hole in the end of the pin, put it in with the blunt end in. There you go. All you need then is just a little tap. That's how much it needs, nothing basically. And then you will find the pin on the opposite side comes out. Now, if you find it's a little bit tight, don't worry too much because it's got a hole in where the screw goes through and you can use the Allen key to literally pull it out. Just the final bit. So there we go. Yeah. And that pin has got a location diameter, which we'll go through in a moment. Okay. Okay, so that's the first pin out. Next job is to fetch your drill out, which we'll put over there out of the way. Rather than on the floor. <laughs> okay. Next one is the main shaft. Not the one with the block on, but the main shaft. So again, use the Allen key, pop him on the end, and literally push and away you'll go, it'll come out. Okay, as you take this out, you'll see, turn it right angles, it's got a hole. That hole is where that pin locates it to stop it falling out. So the pin stops that one coming out, the screw stops that one coming out. There is, um, there's a hole on the other side as well. Yeah, that hole on the other side is basically a smaller hole, and when you, back, when you come to reassemble it, you must make sure you get it the right way around, otherwise it won't go together. Okay. We'll run through that in a second. Okay, the last one is the actual block itself. Again, pop the Allen key on the end, give it a push, and away it goes. So there is the differential stripped. And so onto the reassembly. Okay. First thing you'll need is your output shaft. Put your fibre thrust washer on. That drops down internally within the diff. Like on the standard one? Just like as per standard. Make sure it turns. Okay, you're in. Right, next job, we'll need a thrust washer. Let's put a little bit of lube on here. It's Torco MPZ. It looks like jam. Doesn't taste like jam though. Don't eat it. <laughs> okay, thrust washer's in place. Now we put the block in with the pin on and that goes opposite the screw hole yeah but be sure you get this in the right way around because the holes are offset there we go drop him in now once you get it there you have to roll it back roll it back around to the thrust washer push the gear into mesh and then drops in place like so yeah okay right so now you've got block pin thrust washer all in and that turns Okay, next job, two more thrust washers. Drop a loop, or jam as Stephen calls it. Hmm. Cam jam. Cam jam, that's good. One there. One just there. Two planet gears. One this side. Yeah. One that side. 
and then the pin. This is the big long cross pin. This has to go in the right way round. You'll see there's a hole in there. That pin locates on that hole. If you okay. put it in the wrong way round, pin won't go in the hole. So it's got to be that way round. Got it. Okay, so now we're going to put the pin in. So it's uh, quite a tight fit in there as well, isn't it? Really snug, good, tight fit. So there it goes. That's through the thrust washer, through the planet gear. Now, make sure you've still got this in line here. It needs to be at 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So gently push that in. Then it'll locate on the thrust block. Now you might need just to lightly tap that there. Okay, once it's tapped in, push through. Oops, a little bit too tight. And now it will locate on the next planet gear, through the thrust washer, and into position. Okay? On the other side. Okay, yeah. so now you've got one planet gear turns, two, three turning. You must make sure now that the hole in that shaft is in line with this pin that's going to go in here now. Yeah. So, don't know whether you can see that, Stephen. Just in there. Can you see the hole yep. is central? Got it. Okay, let me just have a look to make sure. It needs to come down a little bit. It needs to come down a little touch. We're doing this quite quickly, but obviously if you take your time at home, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so, now again, after this is in place, the location for this is this screw. This screw goes down there, through that hole, screws into the bottom of the casing. So you've got to have that hole now in line with this screw. Yeah. So, I'm just going to jiggle this shaft a little bit further round because it's not quite in line. This way you need a few more hands. Looks about in line there. Okay. So next job, a little bit of the jam again. Like so. Planet gear in place. And now the shaft. Again, make sure this hole is tight totally vertical otherwise it will not go together just nip that up a touch more yeah so there we go we we'll just tap it finally soft face mallet or similar into place screw down the top just get it started Yeah. Okay. Do you need to talk that up or again? This once it's in place, you could Loctite it. I wouldn't put lots of heavy Loctite, very very mild Loctite, but a good hand wrench. Yeah. Tighten it up. I'm not going to tighten it up at the minute because it's going to come to pieces again. So one tighten it up. It can't come loose because it's in the cavity there. Once the crown wheel goes on top. There is no way it can come out yep. because it's encapsulated within there. Okay. So next job is second output shaft, fibre washer in there. Yep. That's a straight cut crown wheel, but obviously you can use a standard one. Standard one will fit. Yep. Just when you pop that on, just locate it on the gears as it goes in. Line it up on the screw holes, and then. ARP bolts in the holes. These need lock tightening because they don't work with the tab washers. Yep. Pair of bearings. Away you go, straight into the gearbox.